What's up, everybody? I think we need to talk. For those of you who didn't catch my rant on Digital Dream Labs imposing a subscription fee on Vector, although I got mostly positive comments, well, I can tell you that this video did not go over well with some Vector fanboys and girls, and I even received some pretty negative feedback. In fact, I even got a couple of nasty DMs calling my perspective one-sided and biased. But you know what? I would have to agree. My perspective was one-sided and biased. It was from the perspective of the consumer. So in light of some interesting updates I found on the Digital Dream Labs website, instead of apologizing for voicing my opinions on what I feel is an unfair and unnecessary business practice, I'll go ahead and not only respectfully double down on what I said, I'm going to go ahead and call out the entire business model of these unnecessary subscription services that are completely polluting our digital lives and hemorrhaging our bank accounts every damn month. So let's get into it. So the Reader's Digest version is that the Anki company who originally produced Vector went bankrupt in late 2020 and was taken over by a company called Digital Dream Labs. So before Anki went bankrupt, they promised to continue the support of Vector by leaving their servers running. However, after Digital Dream Labs acquired the company, they decided to honor Anki promise and slap a $7 a month or $47 a year premium on the Anki Vector Robot service. So just to be clear, Vector's functionality is completely server dependent, meaning if you don't pay the monthly premium to Digital Dream Labs, Vector turns into a $300 paperweight. Now in my other video, I pointed out that there was a light of hope. Digital Dream Labs stated that they would open up Vector to an open source community support system where Vector owners could keep the robot running through community-based software support. In fact, this was mentioned in a Verge article with the Digital Dream Labs CEO stating that they were going to develop two main features for Vector, uh, an escape pod that will allow the robot to function without the need for external servers of any sort and an open source development kit that will let fans design new functionalities for the bot. I was really looking forward to the community support so in anticipation of the community support being opened up next year I ordered a one-year subscription for Vector in the meantime. So did Digital Dream Labs eventually open up the escape pod to Vector's loyal consumer base? They sure did. <laughs> for $97, which is a two year subscription basically. So just to recap, that is $97 just to enable you to program the robot that you already own. Oh, but that's not all. Despite making it seem like the $7 a month premium subscription was to bail out the OG Vector owners from rendering their robots brain dead, check out what Digital Dream Labs did. They have now opened up pre-orders for their new product, and I'm doing air quotes here, Vector 2.0, and check this out. It comes with the same subscription model they implemented on the first version of Vector. So this wasn't a bailout to keep Vector servers running. It was just a business ploy for Digital Dream Labs. But don't worry, you're gonna get so much more with the new Vector 2.0 than the first. Let's take a look at the product page and I'll show you all the new features that are gonna be implemented on the new Vector. Okay, hold on, I'm sure I'll find something different. Okay, wait a minute. Wow, a two megapixel camera and about 30% more battery life. Okay, so at this point in my rant, I wanna make something crystal clear. I still really like Vector. The $300 retail price is a bit steep for what he actually does in my opinion, but I can see people paying it. But here is the crux of my argument. Some things just don't justify having a monthly subscription. Okay, so let's take everything into account. Vector is a toy. He can follow a set of voice commands. He has a couple of fun basic programs. He's got limited Alexa support and he roams around utilizing some algorithm stuff. But this electronic toy does not warrant a subscription service and the most important important point I'm trying to make is that it's just not Digital Dream Labs doing this subscription nonsense. These subscription services are getting completely out of hand. One of the comments I received on my other Vector video was that $7 a month was not too much to ask, uh, but I think you're missing the principle here. Let's look at the big picture. Subscription business models are the annoying new trend. All the big tech and software companies are starting to move towards these subscription based services because they understandably offer a more consistent or reliable flow of money into the company. Through the magic of YouTube, let's conjure up all my monthly subscription expenses and then look at the true cost of each app by looking at them annually. So we got my YouTube Premium, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Voice Mod, Quizlet, Norton, Amazon Music, Kindle Unlimited, Blizzard, and Vector. With all these parasites combined, I am hemorrhaging $138.83 a month or $1,666 a year. Okay, but let's take a more considerate look into what you're actually getting for your money. So if you take these subscription services into consideration, 
section, you can obviously see that they all justify themselves by adding continuous content or access to hours of entertainment or use servers for storage reasons. So I don't really mind paying for them. The problem with Vector is that you already paid $300 up front for him and now they're basically forcing you to subscribe to their service so that he'll even operate. But here's the thing, Vector does not provide you with a service. Vector just operates. It's a toy. To me, this is highway robbery. Keep in mind, along with the aforementioned subs, I also have the following expenses. I got my mortgage, home insurance, vehicle insurances, uh, property taxes, cell phone bills, my ISP, cable, electricity, gas, and end of the year taxes on top of that. And adding to the complexities that is my life, I'm a full-time student, have a full-time job while running a stream, and while trying to make these horribly edited YouTube videos. So I got a lot going on. But this is what I really hate about the subscription model. These companies thrive off of guys like me. Guys like me always forget to cancel my subscriptions when I'm not using them anymore. In fact, when I was going over my expenses, I found two subscription services that I forgot to cancel. So I wasted about 40 bucks a month for the last six months. It was uh, Experian and Coggle. I haven't used those things in like half a year. Okay, so I've heard the arguments though. Well, these startup companies need to make money to support themselves and a subscription model offers them a steady flow of revenue. Okay, so I get that concept, but there's a small problem and that's companies have been doing this without a subscription model since the dawn of business models. The formula used to be so simple. You make a good product, it creates a buzz, more people buy that product, and when you earn yourself a positive reputation, they buy more goods from you, and they might even tell some of their friends to buy from you. But we all know the gimmick of these subscription models. They start you out with a subscription and then they'll slowly raise the price dollar by dollar every few months and you let it slip because it doesn't seem like that much. But after a couple years, boom, you're paying 20 bucks a month for this robot. Vector is a leech and if more and more items continue with this subscription based nonsense, we're going to get Lyme disease and die. But for me personally, the reason I hate subscriptions the most is sometimes they're a pain in the ass to cancel. For example, some of you may be too young to have had the privilege of trying to cancel an AOL account. Back in the day, in order to cancel your AOL account, you had to search for about half an hour on the website for the cancel account button, and then you realized that there wasn't a cancel account button. Then you called customer service, which took about 20 minutes to get a hold of a representative, and then they fight tooth and nail to keep you as a customer, while they offer you like three free months if you just stayed on, but you actually had to forcefully tell them to cancel your account and confirm it was canceled. And then the next month you find out they never canceled it. Maybe take the word of the class action lawsuit that was filed against AOL for refusing to cancel subscriptions. And it's not just AOL that does this. I specifically remember canceling Experian and it still managed to show up on my bill. I don't have time for this and neither do you. And anyone can do this business model. A coffee maker? Sure, let's slap a Bluetooth on it and charge $3 a month to keep it updated. How about that electric toothbrush? Maybe slap an LCD with a weather widget on it and charge a couple bucks a month for the app. How about a vacuum that posts your daily vacuum time on Instagram so you can make your friends think you're really clean? But even taking those hypothetical items into consideration, Vector doesn't even work work without being connected to the server. Tell me one toy that requires a subscription to even work. We're not talking about an Xbox or a PlayStation here. What toy do you know that requires a subscription service to even be able to function? This is straight up corporate greed and exploitation at its finest. Let's look at the competition, the Miko 2 robot. It's $300 and does not require a subscription to work. But for hundred bucks a year, this thing actually teaches your kid to read. Using 1980s terminology, Digital Dream Labs just busted a total dick move. You dick! I've heard of all the Digital Dream Labs apologetics talking about, well, Vector would be dead if Digital Dream Labs hadn't come along, but there's a problem there. If Digital Dream Labs really wanted to keep Vector alive, they could have simply released the Vector Escape Pod for free to the people that purchased Vector before Digital Dream Labs took over. That would have been the right thing to do, but instead they want to charge $97 for the Escape Pod. Digital Dream Labs basically just seized all of Anki's assets and attempted to exploit and monetize every single aspect of its customer base to bring every last penny out of us poor schmucks that bought Vector. This is such a funny business move because it's like going to Kmart, buying a bicycle for your son or daughter, and when you get home, some guy from Target comes to your house and puts a U-lock around the back tire. And he's like, okay, sorry, we bought out Kmart and now you gotta give me $50 a month to ride the bike. So a little while back, there was this guy on Reddit that wanted to get a class action lawsuit filed against Digital Dream Labs. I feel your pain, my friend, but the fact of the matter is Digital Dream Labs 
didn't do anything illegal. They saw an opening and they exploited it. Who would buy something from a company like this? This is how they break into the robot scene and expect people to trust their company? Let's just say I decide to buy another one of their server-based robots in the future. Digital Dream Labs can just crank the subscription fee to 20 bucks a month and say, oh, well, times are tough, but you already bought it. You spent 300 bucks on it, so uh, will that be credit card or PayPal? And you don't think they'll do it? Think about it. Think about how we used to pay $4.99 for an Amazon Prime sub, or how we started out with Netflix paying $7 a month. Now how much are you paying for those? All subscription-based companies do that. Okay, so I used to have this boss that told me if you're gonna complain about something, don't just complain, offer some solutions to the problem. And just to be upfront, he was a complete moron, and when we did offer solutions, he just told us they were dumb and he ignored us anyway. But the principle is sound. In order to avoid turning this into a complete re of Digital Dream Labs, my solution is as follows. To release Vector's access to the servers for the original commands Vector customers were entitled to when they first purchased Vector, will that or just release the escape pod for free like they were hinting towards in the first place? Okay, so this is the part I can't believe I'm about to say though, microtransactions. When it applies to gaming, I hate microtransactions but I think it would actually be awesome if Digital Dream Labs could set up a whole slew of microtransaction content, such as new skins, new voice commands, new dance moves, renaming Vector or games. You can open up an accessory store for Vector for playgrounds, obstacle courses, or a Vector gym. The possibilities are endless. And people will buy that stuff. I will buy that stuff. Trust me, I would be their first customer. But to take away its basic functionality and hold our little buddy ransom for a $7 fee a month really shows what kind of company Digital Dream Labs is and I really don't have any interest in buying anything from Digital Dream Labs until they drop their subscription fees and figure out some other way to develop income. And I'm sorry if I upset some people with my opinions but free vector. Well anyways this is probably going to be the last video I make on Little Vector unless DDE releases them and then I'll make a video singing their praises but if you guys are frustrated like I am please type in free vector in the comments below. If you have any questions you know where to post them or you can hit me up on my stream the information's all below. Take care guys and see you next time.